and then you moved to another state and you wanted to go right back into Pike, you could move into Pike and it would be all the same programming and then the skills would move up the same way. So it's all the same. Have participated, that's okay. Have participated in Y, in, uh, y member membership is 42%. Um, associate the Y with sports, 78% of the people associate the Y with sports. So we have tons of sports going. Um, we have basketball for all ages, starts at about age three, goes the whole way up, men's basketball, corporate basketball, women's basketball leagues, uh, youth basketball, tiny tots basketball. That's just one sport, and then we try to take that in all different directions. We have a director that oversees that. Right now it's Jamie Nolf, and then she has sports aides that help her. She probably has 15 to 20 on her staff right now, and then I oversee her as she oversees them. And that's kind of the way the network works. If you look at um, one YMCA compared to another YMCA, we fall under the leadership guidelines of YMCA of the USA, but each YMCA is a little bit different in that they're independently operated. So we can set up our own um, roles a little bit, but we fall under the guidelines and the standards and the program standards set by the YMCA of the USA. So that kind of, does that explain a little bit? Are you still with me? In the back, you with me? Smile back there. Oh, you're so cute. Okay, good, go ahead. Our core values, honesty, respect, caring, and responsibility. So you think, okay, blah, blah. But if you step back and really think about what those words really mean, so we're trying to make a difference. The YMCA in Butler is considered a city Y. So we've actually changed in the last 10 years, probably, in that we are not seen as many paid memberships. So what the YMCA does best is we provide memberships to anyone. You're not turned away a Y. And so then if you can't afford a Y, we look at your income and then we deduct the amount that you need to have to make it something that you can do or your child can do. It's one of the best things about the Y. It's what separates the Y from all other fitness organizations. It's my favorite thing about the Y because the Y is a mixing pot. And so when your, when your children would be in the YMCA, they're, with, they're mixed with everyone else's children. It's not like you have certain levels of income or anything like that. It makes it a fair game. Another thing about the Y is once they're in those programs, the instructors don't know any different. And so everyone is treated equally because we have respect and we're trying to be, uh, teach these values to everyone coming through Y programs. Doesn't matter if it's an adult or a child. These are the goals that we have for the classes that we operate. Unique attributes of the Y, it's a well-known brand. So if you go around the world, I've been to the YMCA's in Bath, England, so I worked there, right south of London. I have been to Taipei, Taiwan. Uh, I've been all over Taiwan, actually, to uh, Hong Kong, to Tokyo, and the front door of the Y says YMCA. It's the same logo, so it's, it's really pretty amazing when you're standing in another country with an interpreter, but really you still recognize the front door that all looks the same. So it's a very well-known brand. An active versus passive organization. So we're trying to keep moving. A lot of people just like me go out and speak about the YMCA so that we can keep it fresh. We can keep students and new people and volunteers coming into the Y. Have you ever thought about volunteering at a Y? Anybody thought about that? Uh, I can tell you that I hire for my volunteer list all the time. Because to me, those are the people that really thought it was important to be there outside of payroll. I totally understand that you're trying to pay gas and things like that, but when you volunteer, there's no issues about bringing you on staff because we don't have to pay you right away. But then as you are there, you can develop some skills and you can make some friendships and we can see you actually in action. That's not just the Butler Y, that's any Y or that's any place. So volunteering is a really important thing to think about because it helps you to just develop who you are and makes you a little bit better as um, a person going into an entry level job. So think about volunteering at a Y or anywhere. Prime locations. Because we've been around for like 100 years, we've got all the good spots. So if you look at the YMCA in Hong Kong, it's right downtown. The, Hon the YMCA in Tokyo, the YMCA in New York City, they're all right downtown. So, so the, um, the, the property that we have is the best property that there is anywhere, and sometimes we even sell that property for really big bucks and then move a little bit away and start huge complexes with just the prime location money that's received from being there for 100 years. So we've been around, it's pretty easy to find. Deep devotion, devotion and involvement by Y members. If you're a Y member, you love the Y. I mean, the people that we have are really devoted 
Um, if they walk through the hall and there's a piece of paper on the floor, they usually pick it up because it's not just that they're a member. They feel like they are part of it. They add to it, they add suggestions, and oftentimes they also volunteer on the side. I have mm, maybe one third of my health and well-being staff is volunteer. So these are people that just really believe in what they're doing and they usually have really great skills or I help them develop those skills in the area that they want to give back. High reach frequency. Most of our members come to the Y three times a week. The two biggest areas that we're seeing at the Butler YMCA because our demographics have changed is uh, sponsored memberships. A sponsored membership means that we help them with whatever they can't afford to come to the Y and the mm -hmm. other seniors. So all of a sudden our senior classes have gone from three or four to maybe 30, 35. So that's an area if you've never worked with uh, um, seniors, seniors programming is huge. So things like pickleball, um, we're just trying to develop that sport right now at the Y. Um, badminton, so I think we oftentimes think of, of competitive sports, but if you really look at the world and obesity, thinking about those sports that are not so competitive and driven, but actually have a high marketability, might be something that you might want to develop some skills in. Okay. These are all just, just logos. You might just walk down through it. If you think about youth and government, maybe you're familiar with that. That is a YMCA program. If you think about Big Brothers, Big Sisters, which we house at the Butler YMCA, this is a program where if you were a single mom with a little boy, you could actually be, he, that little boy could be matched with a male mentor that would uh, play basketball and, and do kind of guy things or vice versa for girls so that they actually have healthy role models as they grow up. Really wonderful program. But all of these are just YMCA programs that if you went across the United States and went into another Y, you could see that same program and then you, you would feel more of a comfort level of enrolling in that program. My responsibility is specifically at the Butler Y. The way the leadership works at the Butler Y is we have an a CEO, and that CEO oversees both branches, and then the Butler Y has an executive director, and that would be the number one person at the Butler Y, and then I'm number two, so I'm physical director. So anything that moves physically, I'm responsible for at the Butler Y. So that puts me over about 109 staff. Um, I have program areas of health and well-being, sports and family, and aquatics. So if you think about all of those areas, uh, last week I started 137 programs. So that is crazy because you have to have a, a spot in the facility to run the program, instructors, guidelines, registration, and all of those different things for each one of those programs. Just a few of the things underneath me, um, training staff and mentoring staff. I don't know what happened to my picture there. Uh, so we have water aerobics down here. This is an older seniors class, which I'll show you further on down. We started with classes like this, but they're now all huge with a wait list. Youth uh, certifications, uh, kids class, and I'm teaching a cycle class. You can see me in the front. I'm teaching a cycle class there at the front. Good. I'm over, I oversee the fitness center, not just um, the fitness center, but all of the equipment. So I'm responsible for making the bids, for purchasing the equipment, for keeping it up, upgraded, for keeping it um, maintained, uh, for staffing the area for the personal trainers that work in that area, and for fitness center staff. So it's staff from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. six days a week and Sundays in the winter. So it's a huge entity just in itself. Group fitness classes, I'm currently offering, I think, 47 group fitness classes between water and land. That does not count seniors classes. Those are just regular group fitness classes. Um, these are all classes in one studio, but I have three separate studios. That's a really poor picture so bad on my computer. That, that's a spinning class. That's our spinning room. Uh, currently, we have Kaiser bikes. So I think it would be really great if you played around with a lot of different uh, types of activity, just so that you could have an understanding of what things have, are like. Have you ever been in a cycle class? Yeah. Have you ever been in a step class? Have you ever been in any kind of a group fitness class? Yeah, so there's a lot of people in here that have never experienced all those different kinds of things. But when I'm looking to hire someone, I'm looking to at least hire someone that is well-rounded. They've at least experienced different things. So if I say something about this, they'll at least have a picture in their mind of what that might look like. Okay. Active older adult classes, they look like this now. Uh, this was that same room that only had the two people in it. It got so full that we had to move them into a, uh, one of our gymnasiums and bring down a, a curtain. Uh, and like I said, we have an average of about 30 in a class. 
and we're teaching all kinds of different things. So we're just getting ready to start another walk class that Jamie or someone in her department could lead. So this is just a functional walking class where they just walk around a gym. Um, but as obesity rates go up, these are skills that would really be good for you to kind of think about. That's Jamie. I don't know whether anybody recognizes. Anybody recognize Jamie from in here? A couple people. Yeah. Um, I can't remember when she graduated sports management, but we always seem to have uh, sports management grads doing practicums in our building. I think she said we just have one starting right now. Um, but anyways, there are all kinds of opportunities. The thing about the Butler Y is when you come, you work. And so I think that's a really good thing. I'm proud of that. Uh, she never has busy work, we never do busy work, and everything that happens at the Butler Y is for a purpose. She oversees our events, and so the main events we have is like the Butler YMCA Triathlon that happens at Moraine. Uh, this year we had, I think, 287 participants. So if you think of running a triathlon with 287 participants, um, she did it almost flawless. And I am hardcore about giving praise. <coughs> it was incredible. Um, and so I used to kind of lead her, and now I'm just on her back burner for whatever she needs me to do in those kinds of events. But those are things that take time and skills and patience to develop. But if you were to volunteer at an event like that, that would give you an idea of how an event like that is run. Last year we just started an indoor triathlon at the Butler Y. I think we had 50 or 60 uh, participants, which for us is small, which we were thankful for, because now we'll develop that so every year we get a little bit better at how does that work and how can we do that better. So those are just some of the things. Um, she oversees, she created a whole line of gymnastics classes, and then those gymnastics classes went into cheerleading and went into um, baby dance and, and, and kids, kids and mom ballet. And then she took the littler kids that are maybe three years old and moved those all into another whole line of uh, sports. So she has sports now for three-year-olds, which doesn't really look like the sport, I can tell you. Um, but she has little mini basketball hoops and things like that. Parents love it. It's activity time in the gym. Then she took that same age group and did like um, little Michelangelo's and uh, Dinosaur Time and My Pretty Princess and developed that into another whole line of classes. I mean, the kid's crazy. She's crazy about thinking about how to market um, activities for mainly youth and adolescents. So you've got to be a little bit off the wall and we try things and it doesn't always work the first time. She's moving right now into kids lacrosse. Um, and so it's just always one of these things with her. She says, what would you think if we, and I'm like, here we go. But she does it all the time, but that's how she really got a lot of things going. All right, uh, that's really hard to see too. That's one of our gymnasiums. We have two full-size gymnasiums that she oversees. Um, they are planned from 6 a.m. to maybe 9 p.m., six days a week. And so it's an actual schedule that rotates all day long. We share the gymnasiums with child care. We have about 100 children that are in child care full time. And in child care full time, then they are state responsibilities as far as guidelines of activity. So they come in and out of these gyms. Seniors come in and out of these gyms. Gymnastics and all of the evening programs come in and out of these gyms. So they're just rotating all the time. Just that rotating schedule is a real finesse of trying to get everything kind of tweaked out. Okay. That's our other gym. About 10 years ago, we added on. Uh, we added on a brand new full-size gymnasium, and underneath that is a fitness center, and underneath that is a warm water therapy pool. And so those were our three additions. Um, all of that added to, so that we have 85,000 square feet at the Butler YMCA. Uh, this has the, a partition that comes down that, that red line right there, so that we can actually split it into two areas. So if we want to make two gyms instead of just the one for full court type activities. Okay. This is a racquetball court. Uh, we have two of them. We used to use racquetball courts primarily for racquetball. Uh, now we use them for all kinds of things. So we have senior classes in there. Next week we will host the I Can Do It program. Are you familiar with the I Can Do It program that Slipper Rock offers? It's the physically adapted graduate students and they work with mentally and physically handicapped people. So they pair them up in Butler County and then I think we have 50 some matches this year. Um, we're one of their pilot programs for the US and they'll come in and work with these people once a week. Um, but they use the racquetball courts a lot because racquetball is not as popular as, as it once was, but we still use these areas for all kinds of activities. Um, and so it's just another area for us to schedule. 